Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, this, is, this tape, we're shooting this in the year 2000. And over the last week, I spoke about this on the show last week, but in the last week or so, someone strapped bombs to themselves and either drove into a boat, took a bicycle and drove into a checkpoint, or took a car and, and drove into a, a wall at, at an embassy. And that's in order to get to heaven. That is under some weird, demented, crazy way of looking at the precious human life is that's the way for us to really experience true love and true devotion and a true experience by taking this human life and in the process taking as many other human lives as possible. And it's just so berserk, it's so weird. And there's such an opportunity for us. We came into these human bodies and the differences between us are so small and so minute compared to the sameness between us, compared to the love we experience, to the true destiny of who we are, to the true oneness of what we are. And for us to come into that love and that experience is really what, what the truth of this life is. And, and we have to stop recognizing the differences that cause us to, to, to take these bombs on our back, to blow ourselves up in the name of love, in the name of God, in the name of truth. There are so many miracles and, and possibilities for us as human beings, young and old, black and white, all the different colors, all the different races, all the different religions, to come together and to share that oneness, that love, that experience that we all can have, that we all are the, the same love, that we all are one family. And it's really, it's, we, we just can't keep doing these things under one philosophy, one format, one idea or another. It's just, it's too crazy. There's too much joy available for us here. So tonight we have an extraordinary show where, where miracles, the miracle of this human life can, is, is shown, is manifest. We have Deborah Brooks with us who's an inspirational artist and her Spenter Angel collection is just an amazing story. I mean the paintings themselves are amazing but the story behind them, the story of this woman who had never really painted before, had this experience, this vision, this, this transcendental knowing, and all of a sudden, without any training, without the right equipment, without even uh, easels, without even uh, canvases, started painting these seven spent to angels. And it's just an extraordinary story, and you'll see a video where you can see a lot of the paintings. They're huge, so we, we didn't bring them on the set. And then we have also with us Dean Brooks, who's an actor. He's a, a former actor. I don't think he's acting anymore. He's a writer. He's a third-degree black belt. He, he's now he's writing books with his wife, Deborah, who's the, who painted the Angel Collection. And the books, he's written numerous books, one of which is Gift Forgotten, and one is about the last spent to Angel. And these books are just extraordinarily beautiful in, in, in words and in, in Deborah's art. And, you know, with Dean and Deborah here with us tonight, we can experience that connection, that connection from the, the first archangels, which is what the Spenta angels are. And to come together in love, instead of strapping bombs to ourselves, instead of taking up checkpoints, instead of separating things, in, in all the ways we separate things, it's time we came together. It's time we came together because that's truly who we are. We are one love and one family and it's time for us to do that. So there's really going to be an amazing show tonight. So please now join me in a short meditation and then we'll begin the show. Thank you. Hi everybody. Uh, the first video we're going to have tonight is the story of the Spent Angels, uh, uh, the collection uh, of paintings by Deborah Brooks. I, uh, Deborah and Dean did this video. It's a beautiful video, and then Deborah and Dean will be uh, be with us on the set to discuss 
the video and their art and their creativity and the magic that's happened in their lives and that could happen to all of us. So please, the video. Welcome to Angel Cove Studio. There's no doubt that Deborah Brooks was inspired when she painted the Spent to Angel collection. As you can see, a master artist is at work. The only thing is that Deborah Brooks had never painted before. With no ready-made canvases big enough for her inspiration and no paintbrushes, Deborah turned to a large wooden doors for her canvas and bits of sponge for her brushes. With the doors leaning up against the walls, acrylic paint and bits of sponge in her hand, the Spent to Angels came to life at Angel Cove Studio. Seven ancient Babylonian angels whose origins date back somewhere between 500 and 1000 BC have been brought to life in the creation of the seven majestic paintings, the first archangels, spenters as they were called, painted in acrylic on wood and a feminine mystique, the spenters stand seven feet high with beautiful translucent wings flowing out and across, while some in triptych form span seven feet across. Inspired by a page and a half in a book on angels, the told of the ancient angels, Deborah began her work. Little did she know at the time for this historical, spiritual, religious implications of the Spintas. Unraveling the mysteries took Deborah Brooks on a spiritual adventure dating back over 3,000 years. And on this odyssey, she would learn that the Magi, the ancient Zoroastrian priest who practiced the religion of Zoroastrianism, three wise men told in the Bible, who were guided to Bethlehem by a star and by an angel. The Magi knew of the Spenta Angels, for it was their religion. Welcome to my studio, Angel Cove Studio, where I conceived and painted the Spenta Angel Collection. You're looking at Asha, the first angel that I painted, and she is the gift of truth, meaning follow me, I am the way. Each angel was assigned a gift, and, and the gift of truth, of course, is one of the most important gifts that we have in this world. If we face the truth, if we know the truth, if we always follow it, we will know our way. And it will lead us to the other virtues of the other six Binta angels. So Asha is the leader, so to speak. She's the one who might, you might say is dearest to my heart. This is Cherubim, the gift of wisdom. Although we talked about Asha, who was the first angel that I painted, Cherubim is the keynote angel of the Spinta Angel Collection. I chose her to lead, so to speak, because she is the gift of wisdom. We are setting up the Spinta Angel Foundation to aid children in their various needs, and Cherubim will be the keynote angel, the leader of the foundation. And she is painted, as you can see, again, 80 inches tall, 48 inches wide, and uh, she's grounded yet ethereal. She's floating through a doorway. Uh, one of my favorites. Of course, it's hard to choose when you're the painter. <laughs> but she is one of my favorites. This is Mayer, the gift of light. As you can see, uh, I painted her with just surrounded by light, with light emanating from her. Uh, this is one of the as all, all the gifts are important, but light is one of the most important gifts. Uh, when we are, when we have followed the truth, we, when we are one with wisdom, we are one with light. And when we have the light within us, we know what our purpose is, what we are supposed to do. And we emanate it. We walk down the street and people will see a glow about us. And that, that's what Maya represents. She represents the light, the beauty, the love, the one-pointedness, the truth within everybody. And uh, 
she just floats. She's done in triptych form again. And incidentally, the triptych form, which I painted three of these in, is an ancient form that was used as tab uh, ancient tablets within the various churches to portray angels and scenes within the Bible. So Mayer is the largest. She's 86 inches wide by 80 inches tall. She has uh, an antique looking face, uh, ancient uh, kind of uh, Egyptian, Babylonian, although she's a blonde, very interesting face. As I say, these just came to me. These, I held the brush and God held my hand. As I look at her right now, you can see new things that I hadn't thought of. And that's me or the gift of life. And here we have Ashi, the gift of blessings. Ashi is a very special spent angel to me. The day that I painted her, Brody, a fabulous Irish setter, lost his life in front of my house. Before he passed on, though, I was able to love him and comfort him and give him some peace. And let me tell you, that inspired me to paint the most beautiful angel, the colors of Brody, that this world has seen. She is truly painted from my heart. And I wanted her to represent the beauty that life goes on. So remember the blessings in your life. And remember that if somebody's taken from you, they still are there in your heart. And many blessings in this world. Remember them. And this is Ashi. And here we have Armadi, the gift of love and peace. And Armadi is holding the dove, signifying love and peace. And in the book, Malaika Beauty, the Last Spinta Angel, the dove has a wonderful voice that says, Aku, Aku, signifying its love for the world. Armadi is beautiful in her violet gown, her wings spanning outward, unlike any of the other angels I painted, I think perhaps she's the most delicate. And of course, love is delicate. Love is precious, and so is peace. So if we remember to love, to love ourselves first, and love all the beauty and the gifts of the world, all the blessings, and remember the peace, we will find peace in ourselves, and we will have it all. Remember our body and the dove. Aku, aku. This is Bellatus, the gift of delight and beauty. Bellatus is holding in her hand the magic orb. The magic orb dances in the Malaika beauty, the last Spinda angel. And the magic orb represents all the beauty of the world, the beauty within and the beauty without. And oddly enough, I mean, what touched my heart, I was watching a show on Galilee, and these archaeologists had unearthed the remains of a mosaic painting called the Mona Lisa of Galilee. And it looked just like Bellatus. And I have not seen that image until about two weeks ago. So Bellatus, again, is very special to me. And she should be special to you. Just remember the beauty within your hearts, the beauty within all the hearts of all the people, no matter what happens in your life. Remember the beauty of the flowers, of the sunset, of your puppy, your dog, your cat, your child. Bellatus, the gift of delight and beauty. Here we have the precious Malaika Beauty, the gift of all good things for the little children. Malaika Beauty, in her book, The Last Spinta Angel, was so afraid she would not have her gift or know what it was because all the other angels had their gift. But her gift is the most precious of all. It is the gift of all the gifts all the angels have, and it's her gift to give to the little children. Malaika Beauty has a soft, expressive eyes, sometimes sad, sometimes filled with joy. She just protects all the children, and she will be very important with the Spinta Angel Foundation. She's holding a gift of lilies, lilies signifying blessings. So she's blessing everyone with the gifts of all the angels. And although she's the smallest, she represents all the good things for the little children, for the little children and the adults in us that never got to be, for little children everywhere. And that's Malika Beauty.
Hi, welcome. We're on the set with uh, Dean and Deborah. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. So why don't one of you start talking about like how the whole miracle of the spent angels and and, and why don't you talk about because you were f sick, you had hurt yourself. I mean, you'd been healthy your whole life and you were a third degree black belt and probably <laughs> right. macho all over the place. <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden, you weren't so. I wasn't in such good shape. Uh, I was in a position where I'd had a, a, a tremendous uh, sh shoulder. Wait, uh, but didn't something come before? Didn't all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you had a. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, mean, that, that I mean, all of this ad, actually, this all really uh, has to do with the spent angels. You right. know, the, 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 what they call it, the, the dark night, I think it is. Right. Um, um, first of all, yeah, I woke up one morning. And, and you were married at this time. Oh, oh yes. yes. In fact, we, this was just a few months before the spentas actually right. came into right. being. But, but uh, well, excuse me, uh, a little longer than that. I woke up one morning, and all of a sudden, I couldn't see out of my left eye. Um, at the end of the day, we had been in Los Angeles, and we went to the doctor, and, and uh, we found out that I had a spontaneous detached retina, which is one in 10,000, but I, I was one of the one in 10,000. And uh, uh, rushed me to the hospital, uh, trying to make sure that I get gained the sight back in this eye, and there's really no guarantees with the detached retina because it was, it was pretty bad. And, uh, Usually you get that from fighting. Sure, I mean, it's, it's sure. A, it's a uh, it, fight, uh, a boxer's I, I hit, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, this didn't come from that. Uh, it just happened. Uh, it can happen. Right. Um, and uh, so I was, uh, I was possibly going to be blind in the left eye. Um, and that was just a quickly overnight scenario. So um, Deb worked with me. We had to hold my eye, in, uh, my my head in a particular sort of way. And uh, hopefully, these bubbles that they shot behind the eye to lift the retina would a attach the retina. Uh, hopefully, and then nature could do its course without having to do some more serious operations. Well, thank God it did attach, and through a period of time, I got my sight back. That was like in an April, of, of, and uh, uh, I, I, then in September, I tore my rotator cuff working out, and uh, that got horrendous, uh, and I was by now getting gun shy. Um, I went into the hospital. <laughs> you were wondering what you I, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I went to the hos sudden. hospital. They, they do the shoulder rebuilding, and, and, and uh, this is, we had just been in Corona Del Mar from Los Angeles for about a year. And I, I was in recovery and had a frozen shoulder. Could, I couldn't get any, my whole body, right side of my body was... was and your really, whole life you'd been athletic, oh, athletic and you were a third degree and, uh, black I mean, belt. This, so, I mean, you'd been in training, so all of a sudden you start... Everything. Am I coming? I mean, is, is life trying to, to get right. me back? Am or I was, slow, was, supposed to slow down? Yeah, you know, what's the point here? Right. And uh, so the shoulder was really bad. And uh, finally I was going into therapy, and uh, this was about June. Uh, about six years ago, 1994, 95. And uh, I'm in therapy every day, a lot of pain. And, and uh, Deborah says to me one day, uh, well, kind of, this is how it kind of leads in. Deborah says to me one day, um, uh, she had just taken a, a studio and she had been a designer for many years. And she said, uh, I, I, I want to paint angels. Well, <clears throat> at that particular state, if she just said to me she wanted to fly to the moon, uh, I just said, right. fine. I was preoccupied. Right. <laughs> right. And, and she said, no. And she said, but you have to get me uh, uh, doors. And I said, doors? And she said, yes, because I can't get a canvas big enough. Mm -hmm. So I went along with the plan. I went, got the door, brought it back. And uh, as natural as seemed, okay, sure, here, honey, you, you want to paint, paint. I thought she'd just do a little dabbling. And, right. and uh, uh, so what happened is that all of a sudden I saw this, this beautiful goddess-like uh, creature taking form with her back toward, toward, uh, towards us. And uh, it was magnificent. And, and then she said, but I need two more doors. I said, for what? She said, well, it's not finished. So I went and got her two more doors, and they, she joined them together. It became what we call a triptych. triptych right. And then these, so it was magnificent. And I was taken with it. And then she said, I need another door and another door. And but to go back a step, yeah. when, when you were doing some like, in, almost like praying for his health and praying to see what oh, to do yeah, and all was. that. No, yeah. When this whole idea yes. came to you, why don't you talk about yes, that a definitely. little bit? Well, we actually had had this story of the Spintus for about a year, just a little page and a half we'd found. But I started. Um, following this book called The Abundance Book by John Randolph Price. Mm -hmm. And he had a 40-day plan. And I, I did the plan, and of course I expected, well, I'll win the lottery, whatever. <laughs> but what I got were seven angels. I, I, I had this... So you got the visualization of them. You, you well, kinda... what I got was, I think, clarity that, yes, I need to do this. 
And you and had never b painted ne before? Never. I mean, you had been creative and a designer. All my life, yes. But, but never painted, never no, with a brush? No, I was afraid to paint. I was afraid. I was a very timid child, and an art teacher said something to me once in, I think, fifth grade, and I, I was afraid. I wouldn't be good enough. But I saw this, cute, this little studio, and I said, you know, this is small. I love where it is. I'm going to do I'm just going to try this. And I went way in the back of the room. I didn't, you know, I thought, well, I don't want anybody to see me because I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. And uh, as my husband said, Asha came out beautifully, and I kind of moved up toward the window slowly. <laughs> and uh, one just evolved after another. I mean, did, when you first got the, the feel to do this, did all seven come? Because we've had, yes. you know, I think you, I sent you the tape of Andy Lakey, and he yes. got what he, but he was in a drug addition. Yes. <laughs> he was going yeah. yeah. But he got to do 2,000 of those, you know, the type yes. of Andy yes, Lakey I know his work. angels. Yes. Yeah. By the year 2000. Right. You know, right. so he got like a whole. <laughs> but did you get all seven that way? or? They came to me, as they say, sometimes an artist discovers what's already there on the canvas. They just, as I painted, they came to me. Mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of Asha, I did see or f feel that I was seeing this angel walking through a doorway that, w that represented three archways of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And that one was very clear. And then the others I just stood up and painted. Uh, and, and you didn't really have the right equipment. You started doing it with like... Uh Sponges I, I used and sponges. I, I wanted that feeling of just being so close to the work. It's a wonderful experience. And I do paint with brushes now, but uh, I couldn't have gotten closer to what mm -hmm. I was creating. So it was my hand directly on the subject matter. And uh, they just, it was like a miracle. It was, I, I paint like a dance, so I move my hands like this. And one of my students called it Deborah's Dance. But it, 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 they just evolved. So in about six or eight weeks, they were all seven ancient spintas were created, seven mm -hmm. feet tall, uh, some seven feet wide. And, and then, how did that progress? I mean, did you start say, well, you know, now <laughs> I'm an artist, or now? How did that, what happened after that? Or well, the gallery. Well, uh, uh, yes. Um, well, when she finished them, I, I, we said, "Well, honey, we, you can't. We can't sell these. I mean, these are like our, our children. children. <laughs> you get yourself take this one and leave the other six. Uh, you know, we, we, we can't pay them again. No, and, and so we're not going to sell people. them. So, what yeah. do you do with these? Right. Uh, and really, um, uh, quite honestly, people started coming to the studio who were well versed in the arts, loved the work. They sort of hand carried Deborah to the proper places that she could get them reproduced in high end chiglaze, they call mm -hmm. it the highest. Yeah, chiclay. Uh, uh, chiclay, yeah. right? And, and before we knew it, all these uh, spintas were being photographed and then made into reproductions um, and so they could be sold. And with two months after that, uh, she did her first uh, uh, one woman show in Laguna, the Laguna. Uh, um, Gallery, and so um, we were sort of hand carried. You know, it yeah, was it's a funny because yeah. it's really similar to Andy's story. Yeah. I mean, somebody happened to walk yes. in and yes, see yeah. stuff. That. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. yes. It's a very, you know, like, and that's like the miracle of it all. It I mean, is part of it. Yes, you know, yes. the whole thing. I mean, the universe does have a way of way moving, of, yeah. of moving us sure. that way into that, you know, into that expansion, into that love. Yeah. And and the spent angels are. From the the original archangels, right? And, and they were the original. The, the goddess archangels. representations of the one. Is that something? The yeah. precursor was it? The yes. pre. Uh, we, we, I began to become the reader of right. once once we got involved. Uh, why why didn't I have, why hadn't we heard of the spentas? Um, so what we found out is that they were the precursors to what we we know in angel mythology. Um, as angels, they were the precursor in, in pre-Babylonian times of these seven emanations of light uh, from the one creator. I read somewhere in your literature, I thought it was like the feminine aspect. The fem of the exactly, one. exactly. Now, all, all of them were done. All of them were endowed with a feminine uh, aspect, the, the feminine face of God, if you like. Mm -hmm. yes, and um, yes. uh, so there was an intention there in this in this uh, uh, mythology of, of Zoroaster. Um, at the time, um, and this this um, uh, this mythology began to feed uh, into um, some of the Christian and uh, aspects of, of of angels and et cetera. But so, the, in, in some ways, these were um, the Mesha Spenta means sacred immortals. Uh, they were uh, not called angels, but for the simplicity's sake, we we call them that because again, they were the precursor. But um, 
uh, yeah, they would be called the original archangels. You know, probably. I mean, you heard the opening. I mean, you were there, you were yeah. all four feet away. Uh -huh. How do we take throughout history that which is coming all from the one, and and then separate it out? And this is from my religion. This is, and we fight over oh, like, yes. you know, this angel or that yes. angel, this holy site. What what happens in human experience that 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 we start out in this experience of the one, of feminine aspects of the one, yes. and then we end up strapping bombs to ourselves, shooting each other over color, over angels, over holy sites. I mean, it's berserk. Yeah, I know. I, I, and it's very frustrating because when you talk about religions and spirituality, it's very frustrating. Uh, I, I don't think, I certainly don't have an answer to to what that would be, but I, we're trying to solve it. Tonight. Yeah, if we could solve it tonight, we'd have a, we'd have a wonderful. But again, we do know that the answer is love. You love see, is you, you either have two choices yeah. in life, really. You, you have fear, you could choose, or you have love. There's really only yes. two choices in life, uh, and they may mask themselves in lots of different ways. Right. So I, I think understanding and being clarified with what love is, when you really uh, um, choose love, it, it, it leads you to certain things and through certain things. So I think through that process, uh, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm, I believe that there is a divine plan here. And, and, and so I, I believe that this is a, like evolution, it's, we're moving there. But, and the frustration is for people like yourselves and all the millions of others out there who have awakened to that reality of love mm -hmm. and, um, and have to continually not focus on that negative aspect that is happening around us, but, but keep that energy going. I, I believe that's really mm -hmm. the answer for and, us. And did, you had a, 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 a martial arts practice where I'm sure meditation was Sure, I, I was um, where your... Yeah, your I had a wonderful teacher who was well schooled in, in the Eastern um, uh, thought. And uh, so we got really uh, very much more so, in, at that time, this is in the 70s, uh, very much more so into the ideas of of uh, the spirituality of, of the martial arts rather than maybe what we have come I to see. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, well, all that other stuff or, or maybe the karate uh, chop chop movies. But I was blessed from that standpoint. So for me, um, I became keenly aware of the journey that mm -hmm. each of us are on a, a journey. Right. And, and the more we become aware of that, um, then the more the journey can open up to us. Mm -hmm. and, and how about you, Deb? Where did. I mean, you know, I've had like a history of meditation, yes. spiritual past. What was your experience to come into that, that one experience? I think it started many, many years before I, I uh, started reading Hugh Prather, for one, uh, and uh, Richard Bach, and, and then other books followed, and then I found Randolph Price and many others. And once I found the story of the ancient Spintas, uh, I knew I had to bring this to the world, and it, 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 maybe it sounds funny to some people. I didn't know I could paint them. I didn't know how. I just knew that this was my mission, my destiny. And I believe a lot of it is about that oneness you talk about. And I, I talked to so many people in my studio and uh, of all different religious backgrounds and denominations and beliefs, and what I see is that it's so much judgment. You know, if I'm Catholic, I judge this way. If I'm Christian, it's Protestant, amazing, fundamentalist, this, I whatever, I, whatever name. But really, love is the one name. Whatever we call God is an individual thing with, within our soul and our heart. And, and I think it's just a matter of not judging and opening our hearts and our lives to everyone and, and their beliefs. And yeah, to how that, that happens, right. I don't know, but I think it's judgment. And I think also a point that I think, you know, part of the journey, this whole thing we're talking about is really a sharing thing. And I think what's important with the people that we've talked to over the last years, and, and through New York, the expos, and different mm -hmm. things like that, is uh, an awareness that these people, all of them out there, have this unbelievable um, um, gifts within them. And, and, and the ones that have awakened to maybe not as clear as to where they're going, but they, what they feel, but they're, they're feeling different. There's an awakening, if you like. And what, I, what we've seen is that the, these people, all of them, are endowed with these special qualities. And one person will pursue this, and someone's pursuing that. But, you know, again, if this could happen to us, uh, you said something, I think. If this could happen to us, um, obviously we were available to it. But if you give yourself into that, into that, just the possibility, 
it's amazing what can happen. Deborah had to give herself to that possibility, and even in her fears. And I think it's, for me, I, I learn lessons by sometimes watching other people or listening to other people, and then I try to, oh yeah, I see. And for me, that's the yeah, big make lesson. Make it real for make you. Make it real for myself. That, right. that, that what we do, um, which is exciting for us, uh, other people have these gifts and they're unfolding. And all they have to do is really just step into it a little more fully give themselves a little more fully a little to the more unknown. surrender to that and then yes, thing, this this same force that 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 made her paint or made me begin to write uh, or allowed us to do these things um, works within them so this is what we've seen a lot of sharing and a lot of this going on in in vast numbers and and you've been traveling a lot because and also you have a, a gallery that's open that how we first met when yes, we right. just stopped by the gallery in harmony yes. And, you know, we just saw these angels and we said, well, we do a television show. You, you know, you guys are insane. <laughs> and, and I'm and sequestered we, away in that little right, loft and you little, found me. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, and that's the thing of it. I mean, what we've been seeing is like, you know, that a really beautiful thing is that people are coming to collaborate. Yes. You know, and to really share. They so, come. I mean, yeah. you know, bridging heaven and earth can bring your love to the world and then, you know, you know, and, and you'll have it in the yeah. studio sure. showing the yes. show and yeah. somebody who wants to be on the show, you know what I mean? And yes. all, this, all the connections yes. start to really hit. Yes, There's a do. growing effect there that, that occurs. Yeah, they're just like yeah. a ripples, yes. you know, and we were talking yeah. earlier about, you know, how we can, you know, get all shows on the internet. And right. so that somebody wants to watch that video we showed before right. Right. and go back and forth. I mean, we'll, we'll not have to be in a certain city at a certain time, but exactly. we'll be a... You know, 24 hours a day, yes. seven days a week in Africa and Portugal and, yeah. you know, anybody who has an internet access. Yes, so yes. that's just, the wonder of Yeah, that's the wonder. Yeah. And that's, I mean, the thing about the internet is like, in a way, there's no time and space. Right. So, I yeah. mean, it's almost like, yes. you know, the, the 60s now. The heavens. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, you know, maybe what we'll do now is uh, we'll, we'll have a video. I, I didn't call the video earlier, but this is a video and it really goes to what we've been talking about. It's a video... Uh, this is a video that we have a lot of requests for. Alessia did the show uh, live, and it was a performance of All the Same Love. It's from the new CD that Alessia and I produced called Alessia Bridging Heaven and Earth. And also, thanks for all the, the emails and the calls we've gotten, you know, congratulating us about it. So this song was written by Alessia and I, and it's called All the Same Love, and it's on the CD, Alessia Bridging Heaven and Earth. So...
Hi, we're back on the set with Deborah and Dean. And really, I mean, we're all the same love. Let's, let's get with it. So you, you were starting to say about the spent angels, how the, the, yeah, the yeah. motto and the prayer you were using when Dean was sick. and Yes, it was, let our hearts meet, our souls touch, and our spirits soar. And I, I really never told him I would just say this prayer, you know, find a little private place. And, and uh, then after I painted the spintas, uh, I said, my God, that's my mission statement with the spintas. That's what it's all about. And so then I did a painting that represented that, which to my delight, I mean, people have been just embraced. When they come to Harmony to my gallery and they find it, especially those who are in love or or uh, have a loved one they think of, they buy that, that print. So, uh, and I think that's what it's all about, what your show's about, what we're about, what uh, all these, what love is about. <laughs> right, sure. It's all about that. Yeah, and the, the front page of our website is, uh, we are all made of, we are all made of love, God is love, and we are God. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, yes. you know, in three sentences, like yeah, a haiku, I mean, that's, it. that's it. And that's it. And, that, yeah, and then, yeah. then we have 400 yeah. pages after that. Yeah. Yes. Or, or, right. Or, like the simplicity. Else. But really, that's but, it with, yeah. you know, lightning. Yes. Well, you've seen the site. Yes. And so when did you guys start collaborating on books? I know you're the writer, and then there's a lot of your art in there. And actually, yeah, I think we have the, and, the covers. If we want to catch those over there, we yes. have the two over on the, 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 the far left. The Spent Angel yeah. Collection. Uh, how, I, as I said, I started off as the observer, and, and it was a wonderful position to be in to see the things come to life. Well, the next stage for me was a lot of research and finding out more about it because this yes. this just happened uh, so quickly uh, and we didn't we didn't really understand the full details of uh, of who were the spinters and and what were they uh, in addition to that um, I was continually uh, with people who were coming and and they were also taken individually with the spinters that in, in different ways. One woman would have recovering from surgery and, 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 and another one would be with her child or a child that had passed on and, and so on and so on. So many wonderful stories and yet I, they were deeply uh, touched by these individual spentas and I thought, uh, my goodness, uh, I'd love to write a story, uh, uh, um, a magical story, um, like a mother to child kind of a thing. And, uh, and so all of a sudden, uh, I, I started writing this, and uh, having been a writer, I'm, I'm, I'm very... To go back, Malika Pewdie. Malika Pewdie, the, the last, last, Spinta, the last yeah. Spinta Angel, yeah. uh, is the name of this, this magical story. Uh, what I'm so thrilled about is I wrote this story, and I never, ever changed a word. Mm -hmm. It was like uh, my little muse inside of me was just uh, telling Divine me what to write. I, and yes. so it gives me great pleasure that the book has sort of... I had no intention of... of publishing it or anything else. The book took a life of its own and, and, and people have bought it in the galleries and other galleries and I get letters back and from all kinds of, of people. But it's basically a, a magical story um, about the seven spentas and uh, it really can be perceived on a lot of different levels. But basically I wrote it from, from mother to child, so the scenario. That's the, that's the one book here and then I've... And the story of... But like a beauty and how she meets her six yes, sister angels, yes, and they, a, they come to life in a magical she's way. She's the last yeah. of the of the spinters that Deborah uh, created, and um, she's endowed with uh, all good things. And she's and the so child. She's angel. the child, and and in the story, uh, the great creator creates her last, and and she wants to know what her gift would be. Well, of course. Uh, she can't imagine what it could be, and slowly through the story she begins to meet her other sisters, and each one is so wonderful, and each one of them shares her gift with Malika Pewdie. And of course, by the end, having shared all of their gifts with her, Malika Pewdie has all the gifts, because once a, a gift is shared, it belongs to you, it's in you, it's in me. And so at the yes. end, obviously, uh, Malika Pewdie, to her amazement, is all the good things. And uh, of course, then uh, they go to the other world to uh, to be wished for and believed in, and where wished for and believed in. Uh, but you're are. in the process, both of you, with uh, you writing and you uh, illustrating yeah. or, or having your paintings in there, or writing a series of these yeah, magical they, they, journeys. Yeah, they, they, just, they just sort of came, and then uh, this particular book, uh, uh, then one, one developed uh, called "The Gift Forgotten," which was uh, about. Uh, it sort of came back from a, from a line that uh, I think it was Deepak Chopra said that, that we're all gods and goddesses in embryo, yes. unfolding to our true nature, unfolding to our true nature. 
And I thought, gee, you know, a lot of us have forgotten that, that we're really more than what's in the mirror. And um, so I wrote a story, and, and, and Deb, it's, a, it's called The Gift for God, and, and it was about a little boy's uh, saving these pupations, which were caterpillars who had forgotten that they were butterflies. Metaphors for uh, 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 and and even uh, our audience. Yeah, got that. yeah well, I, <laughs> but the, the point is, Deborah sort of doing these wonderful. We have a slow bunch. Of, <laughs> you're just used to the crew, but the uh, audience out there is actually uh, very, very intelligent. Yeah. Well, good. That, that, that's, right. Right. Uh, Deborah did the paintings for that, so we collaborated in that uh, together. And uh, this other spent a book that we uh, we have here. It, it just seems like it's ongoing. Something's always sort of developing in in our collections, or something's developing with me. Uh, and and as I finish a book or something, either she's going to do, does the paintings or she does some painting, and I I get motivated by that. So it sort of feeds off of itself. Yes. Right. And yeah. We just, so we're talking about yeah, earlier so that collaborative process yes. is really, yes. I and mean, we see that expanding. And that's you know one of the things we, you know in the brochure about the foundation to have a real retreat and communication center yeah. where a lot of this information, a lot of the availability of recording studios, printing presses, sure. uh, publishing idea. houses, yes. right. you know, so we all can use it. Yes. Yes. And, and yeah. the stupidity is that sometimes we all like kind of reinvent the wheel. So you have to figure out how to get a barcode, exactly. how to get a uh, yes. 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 And so if this information, if you we knew, yes. expedites everything. Place, sure. uh. <laughs> oh, much, you know, get much. the barcode from here. These are good printers. These are good distributors. Exactly. Exactly. Call this person or we'll call them for you. Certainly. Or, Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, I mean, we have to come together, all of us, yeah. yes. and to have that love really start yeah. expanding. It's like sharing it. You're yeah. giving it out, you're getting it you're back. Getting, so that, so that's, that's right. That's, Your love is, a, is being, everybody's increases. adding to everybody's pot. Sure. Yeah. It does work. It's not, it's not Pollyanna right. kind of philosophy. It sounds good. It yes. actually does work. I, I mean, mean, that's what no we've really been, been experiencing, you it know, works. working, I mean, with the show yeah. and the CD and, you yeah. know, the Leslie Bridging Heaven Earth CD yeah. and the foundation. It's just the more we get out there, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the more that that love just starts, it's, yeah, yes. you know, multiplying, yes, expanding. Yeah. And, and really, because the number of people who are, like, traveling all around the world now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it really is just... just it rippling is. through everything, no, no and you'll find your yeah. book or in some place you'd never. Right, exactly. strangest, strangest, strangest exactly. thing. I mean, yeah. I walked yeah. into place and heard yeah. a yeah. you know a CD, and it's like, yes, yeah. I wrote that song. Yeah. It's like, exactly. Holy that crap. sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 when you you kind of realize that there is something out there that responds to the attempt at the, love. Uh, the yes, intentions or that you have, have and if you just yes. give in it has uh, circuitous ways that it it makes things happen and th and then it's like the faith comes sure that we can lean on that yes. sure go with more that, and more that we can be yeah. open to that sure. that we can share our gift and we won't lose it exactly that we can share our knowledge yeah. Exactly. You know, and not hoard it. Well, I oh, figured yes. out how to do it. Yeah. Let those other schmucks yeah. figure yeah. out. Yes, how to exactly. do it. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> that that gets nothing. Yeah, that's just yeah. a big loser. No, so uh, yes. yeah, and I think people are doing it, and I, I just I see it all the time, and, and it uh, it's you know it's gratifying. You see it. You've, you've right. done it so many shows here. You see it. Right. I mean, we say we're so lucky. I mean, every two weeks, these incredible people come in. You know, yeah. from all over. I mean, yeah. literally all over the world. Yeah. Come in and yeah. just spend. Share some you know, time. a certain amount of time with us, with yeah. their love and their yeah. way of, of their spoke on the infinite. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And really, we've had probably over 200 guests on the show, in the hundred, this is the 106th show. Mm -hmm. And I would say there have been a couple who've been into like ego and what, you know, but almost everyone has been into love and yeah. sharing and... It's, it's just an unbelievable thing. Because you're thing. drawing it because yeah. of what you're doing. Yeah, and I'd say the same thing goes on in your gallery. I mean, we go there and, yeah, it does. You know, and the people who aren't supposed to be on, even if we book them for one reason or another, uh -huh. don't end up getting on the show. Uh -huh. So it's like there's yeah. a protection. Yes. Yeah. Like there the people is. who aren't supposed to go to your gallery, don't. you'll be shut, you'll yeah. be at lunch, you'll yes. be down exactly. here. There is a way, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> there, there is a force there. Uh, yeah, and the ones that you should meet, uh, they're, there. they're there. I had yeah. a, I had to run out on an errand and, uh, and uh, uh, an unplanned uh, bill had come up that I had to run and take care of. And I put a note on the door, and I, I ran into Cambria, because we're in this little town of Harmony. And, uh, Harmony is a little town. <laughs> 18 <laughs> people. <laughs> and, and I came back, and there was this lovely lady waiting at the bottom of the stairs. And she said, oh, you're early. You were going to be back at 2.15. I said, well, you know, I never know how long it'll take. Right. 
You know, when comes up and spends a, a nice amount of money, we shared a beautiful few moments together. She bought some art and fell in love with it. You know, we, we, we shared stories, and I thought, wow, there, you know, that faith, it just pays off. It just, so like you're saying, they'll find you. Yeah, they'll I mean, wait, the more, the more they'll come back. The more you yes. feel it, the yeah. more you can yes. lean. It's like leaning on a cane, yeah. and you know that the cane will hold you. Yeah. So, you know, that's how you can lose the fear. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That you won't be all right. Yeah. If you follow this, you yeah, won't you, be all right. You have to realize that, sure, the fear will be there, uh, but you kind of have to give in a little bit. Yes. You don't have to necessarily yes. take the leap into the volcano. But certainly just by degree, if you'll start to let go of Be that open, ego that's right, very controlling right. and afraid, if you just start to let go a little bit at a time, um, miraculous things uh, can happen and do happen. So, they uh, do happen. Uh, and surrender. Because, yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, every one of our lives could see that, you know, like there are millions of miracles. Yeah, they are. Definitely. You know, I mean, we think, well, the miracle is this or that. I mean, the fact that we can look in a mirror every morning, there's oh, a consciousness yes. that sees yeah. a face and sees a yes. wrinkle and sees you know, a gray yes. hair and yes. goes through that whole the the process right. Right. Yeah. You know, instead right. of the beauty. Yeah. Right. I, but yeah, the whole miracle yes. of this experiment yeah. is yes. just fantastic. Yeah. If we can just rise above the duality and the little things that seemingly are mm -hmm. painful to us, or separate yeah. to us. Yeah, I think we are individually. And, and it's it happening. Be, it's ha individually, yeah. it's an individual process, and, and I see it happening. Again, having come from a place where ego is dominant. Yeah, because you spent a lot of time, uh, and you were a writer and an actor, actor in Hollywood. Very yes, and it's a very. And you were on like that more or less famous for our audience probably has never heard of it. The Days of Our Lives oh, yeah, sure. is a fairly famous. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was a It still is. I mean, it's still on, right? Yes, I mean, it's yes, still yes. one of the top rated yes, shows. And you were an actor on that yes. and you wrote for a lot of stuff. Yes. So you came, I mean, where ego, ego is was key. dominant. If we had this kind of conversation, it, it, it right. wouldn't have applied would to anybody in the room. Yes. Right. Uh, but, but thank God, I, uh, I was fortunate enough to, uh, uh, to find new things. Mm -hmm. I was available, but again, it comes. I think it also comes from a standpoint that everybody, uh, when it's right, when the time is right, even though it may not feel comfortable, there is that uh, awakening. There is that sense of uh, there's something more, and that's basically uh, what, what. And that's what a gift. Can, what, what, I mean, you what, can't. Yes, there you know, it is. You there know, it it's is. Just, at some point, you're drawn to something, and you Ex don't know why. You're drawn to karate. Exactly. I was drawn to. <laughs> Whatever it is, it, 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 it has a way of, of leading you. Yeah. Right, and yes. yeah, and then it takes, and it's like yeah. always but for the grace of God, and that's how we can, yes. if we recognize that, that's how we can always be humble, because most, it's... Most definitely. You know, I but agree. for the grace yes. of God, that door wouldn't open. Sure. And yes. I wouldn't have met that sure. person. I would have got yeah. back at 215 and yeah. she would have left at 209. Yes. Exactly. You yeah. know, so, I mean, grace flowered me with yes. that openness, yeah. with yes. that love. I mean, people right. say, well, I work for that openness. I say, well, what gave you the experience or the courage or the energy or the capacity to work for it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Very true. You know? uh, I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Uh, a, a quick little note here. I, I met Deborah back east, uh, uh, and, and, and it was one of those things that I learned from. I went back there kicking that I didn't want to go back. Right. You know, right. and so, but I've learned now right. that, you know, that you sometimes you, you give in, you don't know what, uh, yeah, what's right. going to come of it, but you got to give in and not try to, uh, to force things so much. You know? I, at one point in my life, I was living on an organic farm, you know, a commune in the right. 70s and all that. Right. And, I, and I said to this person, I'd never live alone and never live in the city again. Right. And I was only like yeah. 21 or 22 years old. I right. mean, so I, you know, on the normal actuarial tables, I had a few more years to go. And, right. I, and I've lived a few more years. Right. I'm not 21 now. Right. Uh, as probably most of you would guess. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and, and within six months, I was living alone in the middle of Washington, D.C. Wow. So from that moment on, it was like these nevers. Yeah, right. You know, be, get a grip. Yeah, right. These you know, life can do. Yeah, right. Lots of things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the more you become aware of it, that, that's wisdom. Right. I mean, after some right. point, you begin to say, wait. You're actually uh, learned something. I'm learning something from it, yeah. So I think what they're going to try to do is pick up some of the pictures, maybe from left to right. So why don't you oh, describe yeah. the ones that we're getting to? Uh, Divine Love is the first one. These are the, some paintings that I've done since the Spintas. All are inspired by the Spintas, by that beautiful ancient story. And Divine Love is exactly what her name says. She's carrying the Holy Grail that carries the waters of universal abundance and love. And uh, what you might think of as the wings behind her, I thought of as a heart or a, a guardian in, in the philosophy of the Spintas. Uh, 
they, they say that we carry a fravashi, a, a guardian of our soul behind us, and so that's that beautiful energy that you see there. And the original is quite large. This is uh, just well, all my originals different. I couldn't bring because they're at least five, six feet tall or seven feet tall, so we, we couldn't quite handle that right now. Um, and then the next one is Ariana, Birth of the Soul. And Ariana is unbelievable to me. She's like the smile, like a universal language. Ariana is uh, uh, about transformation. She's about grace. That is actually the pose of grace and serenity in yoga. And I am truly amazed and grateful every day when people of all ages uh, and genders come in and, and they are just breath, breathless when they see Ariana. And then uh, the next one is the Magi Priestess. And she is my latest painting. Uh, the original is seven feet tall and three feet wide. And, and the Magi Priestess is actually the the human embodiment, like all of us, uh, the sacred woman or the sacred man, uh, that, that embodies all the seven gifts of the ancient Spintas. And uh, she is divine grace and beauty. She's about non-judgment, about knowing the beauty within our so souls and our hearts. And, and so the, that's a small sampling of the work I've been able to do since the Spintas. But, uh, three that are very special to me. They're all my children, so uh, it's hard to decide who to bring. Wow. Yeah, those are beautiful. Thank those you. Are fantastic. So, you know, I guess we're coming to the end of the show again, and, you know, really, I mean, we start out with what goes on and how we end up bombing each other, and we end up into the love and the spent to angels and, and the glory of what it is to be a human being. And really, we can just take that love and take it and just spread it and share it and collaborate with it and just let it overtake you. I mean, that's the time that we're in and that's the time that we can make true for all of ourselves. So, just, it's time we did it. It's time, it feels much better to feel connected. It feels much better to feel the love. It feels much better to know the truth and to feel like everyone's your brother and sister. So good night. God bless you. Come again. We love you. Good night. Thank you, Dean and Deborah.